CFA. CFA. So when we talk of CFA, ladies and gentlemen, then we are looking at the concept of financial anal analysis. You're a certified financial analyst. You're going to be an expert in matters of derivatives, matters of uh, investments, ETC. All right. Is it a very good course? Yes. But if, for example, you are in certain markets, like in Europe, Dubai, or other Middle East, like if you are in the US, then this thing becomes very, very important, a hot cake, because in those markets, before somebody invests, even if they want to buy land, they always look for an expert, an investment expert. I'm so sure there are people here who have bought land. There are people here who have bought shares. There are people here who have, who have bought government bonds. Out of uh, these many guys here who have made investments, is there anybody who ever tried looking for an expert to advise? Like a, a, an investment banker to advise? Let's be very honest with each other. Let's be very honest with each other. So we are not yet ready for that particular qualification. We are not yet ready for that particular qualification as a market. That is why even some of my classmates, I mean, when you get them outside here, most of them came to CPA, just like CIFA. When CIFA started, it was a big hot cake. But right now, how many people are doing CIFA? Very few people. Because I mean, the industry, like when, when is the last time you saw people advertising that they want a CIFA professional? Have you ever seen an advert calling for a CIFA professional? And, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with a lot of humility. Anybody who has ever seen like a CIFA professional being needed somewhere? It, it, okay, of course they are there. You'll get one or two, but I mean, they are very few. When you are doing these particular qualifications, you must look at the end game, the end game. Get even sometimes, just like for example, these bright, bright, you know, there are people who are even being messed by our, by our education system. Get somebody getting an A plane, everything, and then they are called to do actuarial science in Kenya. First of all, do we have people who even know how to teach actuarial science in Kenya? Anybody who has done actuarial science? I mean, people are being taught accounting units and they are being told that now they are actu actuaries. When they try those 14 uh, international papers, they are not able to pass. So you'll get people who did actuarial again, they're simply coming to, apart from a few, of course I know there are those few who will be getting like uh, jobs at insurance companies, senior jobs. But there are very few people. You can see like now Maggie. Maggie says, Mwalimu, I did it. There are very, very few. Maggie, perhaps you could have gotten a very good job. That's okay. But how about your classmates? If, for example, the wheel was to move back a little bit with your A plane, I'm so sure Maggie must have gotten an A plane or a B plus or an A minus. Would you still do actuarial science? Quite a tough course, perhaps. Uh... <laughs> so, and I'm saying that with all humility, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, those particular models of evaluation, there are very few people actually globally who have that capacity of teaching the course. All right. So, some of these courses like CIFA ETC, good, but please, I'll not put them like top priority. I'll do this maybe when I'm going for or if the industry, like right now people are talking about bonds, measurement of risks, ETC, probably five years, 10 years down the line, those professionals may be required, but not today, not today, not today. And remember like where I work, I work with so many actual people. I work with so many CIFA people, but trust you me, the industry which absorbs them, first of all, I hate the industry which absorbs these people. Most of these people are absorbed either in insurance companies or in banks. And what do you know about uh, those two employers? They are not the best when it comes to payment of salaries. You will hardly get an insurance accountant, insurance, uh, uh, for example, uh, professional, getting like 600000 a month. But I mean, a CPU as a BCOM. See, young people are getting very serious, serious salaries outside here. All right. 
All right. Let me not talk, talk about uh, those things so much because I know there are also safer people here. They may feel bad, but you know, as your father, I should be able to advise you accordingly. There are courses which are underrated. You see like a course like CS, a course like CS, Certified Secretary. I mean, there's a gentleman if today you knew how to take notes out of any board meeting, you know how to take in this case here, for example, minutes. And the minutes that are trackable, where you are able, for example, to say that uh, agenda number one was this. This is what we discussed. Four directors voted for this agenda against three. So it became a resolution. And once it has become a resolution, then what is the next course of action, the action plan? We're supposed to do what? By when? And then when you come to the next meeting, you as a professional now, you should be able to come and tell these directors, hey, we don't want to be coming here to engage in unfruitful discussions. We have to review the last meeting minutes. So you take them through. This is what we said. These people are able to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, that is something that can take you very, very far. Like now I'm seeing somebody here is talking about project management. Project management is a big thing. I can't do. I can't do. Maybe I should be able to just mute this a little bit. Most of us, we are not able to reach our full potential in our careers because you are disorganized. Somebody who has done PMP, project management, of course, you'll be told like, uh, whatever, whenever you get a project, you will need, in this case here, for example, ladies and gentlemen, this project, break it down into activities. Look at, for example, the days. First of all, before the days, look at the, uh, the, the, the sequence, which activity must be done after the other one, all right? In this case here, come and plan the days, for example, the time. All right, who is supposed to do what? What are the key milestones? So these are the short courses that you need for you to survive. PMP, Prince 2, very good. CS, very good. Monitoring and evaluation, being able to measure their impacts. You know, when you talk of monitoring and M and E, very good course, very good short course. Don't tell me that you want to pick a career out of it. Of course you can do it, but uh, these are courses that should be done by accountants, short courses. M and E, but it may end up again giving you more food than even your main course. First of all, you'll be required to know the difference between monitoring and evaluation from the word monitoring. Monitoring means continuous because of the ring, continuous. So monitoring is a day-to-day -day thing. Evaluation, now you have external experts coming from outside. If they are architects, they come and evaluate the progress and then they give you a certificate. All right. And then you should be able to measure the impact. Monitoring and evaluation is, in most cases, used in the NGO world. So if, for example, they have come up with some uh, intervention of uh, HIV, so they will be able to, for example, to come and uh, give whatever they're giving to low cost, will be education. And then you as an M and E expert, you'll be called here to come and measure the impacts of uh, these interventions. Very nice, very nice. So then M, M and E experts, you must be very good in doing a research, doing research, all right? So of course, doing research, I mean, you must be able to, if it's just a simple research, literature review, ETC, measurements, empirical, things like that. Then you give a report, very good course, very good short course, very good short course. It goes hand in hand with what we call grants management, grants management. Once you get into this industry of uh, CPA, ladies and gentlemen, you will not cease learning. Learning will be an every other day thing, all right? Especially with short courses, especially when you have got good employers, every other year you must do a short course. Always keep on learning. And if you keep on learning, it will reach a place where the market will be able now to really pay you handsomely, handsomely. All right. So now I'm getting in this case here, ladies and gentlemen, good... Uh, Ah, somebody is asking about CISA. CISA, very nice course. It is a certified information systems auditor. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at most banks, most banks have systems, all right? Where in this case here, somebody will come and have his salary deposited in a bank account. He's able using, in this case here, uh, 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 the, 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 the internet to withdraw from whatever there. So those systems, in this case, they would want somebody who will be able to come and look at uh, the systems manuals, evaluate them, and they give like a certificate that these systems are very good. So CISA 
Anybody who is in auditing industry, if you are an auditor, you must do CISA as a qualification. It is really a big value add, CISA. CISA is a big value add, big value add. All right, so which other course? You guys are not now asking courses about courses. ACC, ni mongea kuhusu ACC sana. Grants management, those are short courses, short courses, depending, you can check online, I'm not so sure of the duration, but uh, grants management, give it like six months. And then do grants management if you know that you have a convincing power. Because grants management is all about writing proposals, writing proposals, winning proposals for the UN, winning proposals for the NGOs. So if you know that you had an issue with writing compositions in high school, don't do grants management. It will not help you. Kesra, uh, quite a good uh, qualification, but if you ask me, you know, for you to practice tax in Kenya, the requirement is CPA. If you're a Kesra person, without CPA, you can't practice taxation in Kenya. If I were you, I will clear CPA and ensure that I do advanced taxation as a, a specialization and go to carry register as a tax agent. And then ensure that you start practicing either at your workplace because tax basically needs you to keep on doing what you're practicing, practicing, practicing like that. I've seen guys who have gone to Kesra when we sit down, when we go to these tribunals, I mean, I realize even if I haven't done that postgraduate diploma from Kesra, I don't think I'm, or rather they are any better than me. But of course, you have got some money and you, you're looking at, for example, that association, then you can do it. But the tax you do in CPA is high up there. It's a good qualification. And now once you become a tax agent, there's an exam you do. At care, you pay 20,000 Kenya shillings. Once you become now a tax agent, and then you know how to make noise, you know how to market yourself, you will be able to get business. There is a lot of money in taxation. A lot of money in taxation. Problem with my students, I always try to advise you, but at the end of the day, I'm not seeing really, it's only one person, this guy called Enderito, that I see after, I, uh, I see him every other day on Facebook, on Twitter, making a lot of noise about tax. And now the guy is a multimillionaire. All right, because you see taxation, what taxation wants is a blogger. You must go and pick, for example, topical areas in taxation, throw them on Facebook, share, share that uh, uh, post to various uh, 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 groups in Facebook, go and make a short video like the one that I'm now making here, throw it in TikTok. You must get very many followers. The moment you get a good number of followers, Start in this case, you're doing, for example, like VAT. Just filing VAT, monthly VAT. Get like just 20 clients you're filing monthly VAT for them. You'll never know poverty because those guys will keep on referring others. Like now the gentleman that I'm talking about here, this guy has a talk of even two, 300 people. You can't, even if you were to give that guy a million shillings a month, he can't accept as a salary. But now you get, I don't know whether my students fear, you know, when you're an accountant, you're not supposed to fear anything. Like you make a video and you want no, no. It doesn't matter how my face looks like. As long as I'm able to communicate, I will always get a follow like TikTok. It's not possible for you to do a TikTok video and then you don't get even one laugh. There will always be that person who likes you. Always, always. But I think uh, most of us, uh, we are quite uh, is it uh, introverts or something. I'm not seeing really people making use of social media to market themselves. And that's why you get people in this case who have got a lot of knowledge, but they are not able to monetize it. So they are in the streets here crying that CPA is a bad thing, that ISPAC is a bad thing, and yet you're the one who do, does not know how to monetize your, 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 your knowledge. Your knowledge. But I think we should be able to get maybe one or two sessions in the future where I talk about how do you get to monetize your knowledge. Because I believe most of us there, we are failing miserably. You get someone telling you that, hey, I cannot do TikTok. But one day I went to TikTok and I met people in this case who are naked. How comes I don't see them? And I'm on TikTok every day. It, it also depends on what you're searching. That search engine knows to give you exactly what you are looking for. 
I mean, there is a lot to, to learn in TikTok. And again, even if you see that they are naked, so long as you are able to do business and you don't even look at uh, them for a lot, what is your problem? What is your problem? This is a huge market, I'm telling you. Is there anybody who is able to use social media to make a living? Anybody who is able to make use of social media to make a living, to make a living? You see, like now, I know of a guy who started like 2018, 2018, just the day, Saindi Omonya Kusema Make good noise, yes. We must know how to make good noise. We must know how to make good noise. Even you guys, you guys, how do you get to know about Mwali Mwaura? I want to believe if you guys you are to be very honest, most of you must have seen my clips on YouTube. You must have seen my clips on Facebook. Or because I make out of noise there. All right. Now you can see we are running a very a very big institution. All right. Simply because of making noise. The number of students, for example, we have at the advanced level, especially the advanced level, like BDA, like last semester BDA, we had 400. <laughs> Strathmore may be, or maybe had less than 20. But I'm not saying that because we are any better. It's because we know how to make noise on. I mean, I, I really sympathize at times. Yes, at times I get to see my students uh, on Facebook and they are really handsome and beautiful. Yeah, but they have not known that Facebook is not a place you simply go and put your face there. You're smiling just like this. All right. That's a social gathering, but a big market. Fine, put your photo there. But after you put your photo there, so what? Down there, finish with something. Tell people that you know what? In this uh, Finance Act 2020, whatever, this has been introduced, and this is your CPA. This is your CPA. Let me just uh, try to see your names here. This is your CPA, Cecilia Chege. You are tax practitioner. Put your number there. When you do like that two, three months, you don't get any call. You even start in this case, you're thinking like uh, uh, Dr. Ura must have cheated you. Ladies and gentlemen, when those calls will start coming in, you won't believe it. We are in the knowledge economy. And in this knowledge economy, being able to advertise your knowledge is a key requirement. Hawezi ukatumia kitu ya kusema kwamba at chema cha user kibaya cha jitembeza. Sasa hata kama ni chema lazima utembeze. Ikiweza kuonekana. Bure hautauza knowledge lazima ujue kutembeza. Lazima ujue kutembeza. All right, so we must make in this case here good news. And of course don't also be all over like I don't know. It's about blogging like one item in the morning and then you keep on talking about it get a few people like that leave it there. Another day, and how do you get that content? It's very easy to get content. I mean, God has given us uh, so many ways of creating content. For example, if you are a college, you simply go and look at what Aura has posted. All right. Of course, you must wait uh, Molim to post like thrice. And then you start taking his old content. You change a few things here and there. You, you must know how to survive. It is survival for the fittest. All right. All right. So that is it. I don't know whether I can also get uh, some energy. Talk about uh, ACCA. So requirements in this case here for uh, a tax agent, that's quite unfortunate. The best question ever, quite unfortunate for accountants. Imagine to be a tax agent, anybody qualifies nowadays, anybody. Even if you're a CPA part two, even if you're a cyber cafe person, Actually, initially, they used to give those tax agency for free. But of course, if you are a member of ISPAC, it would be much easier for you because of what you'd be able to apply through the institute. Eh? Yeah, you attach your institute papers, then that really saves you lots of trouble. But it's not very well defined. You can go to KRA and post that question to them. They'll be able to assist. They'll be able to assist you right away. I'll give it very good. Tax agency have been able to answer that. You see, like now what Guada is saying, this is a very important, your tax caring partner. Guada, this can give you millions, that, that, that statement. Can give you millions, that statement. But he has written a few things, a few things here in terms of taxation, they'll be able to come down there and say, this is Colonel Guada, your tax caring partner. I mean, 
people right now, people are getting assessment uh, uh, letters. Like the other day, I got somebody who has an agency notice. Agency notice where the bank has been told here to deduct 70 million by KRA. And I was able to represent him at the tribunal. Right? People are running helter skelter, confused. Like chicken in this case here, whose head has been removed, and of course, they are still alive, moving. So once in this case, you keep on just mentioning to them that uh, you are a good person in matters of taxation, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to go to play to places. You'll be able to go to places, yes. But you must have a certified letter from the chief. No, you need LinkedIn. LinkedIn is very good. LinkedIn is very good for professional. But at the end of the day, even if it's supposed to do in LinkedIn, you will still need Facebook is the mother of all. You cannot tell me to get away from Facebook. I know two vehicles that are the very best, but even professionals have never known. This thing called Facebook and Instagram, never ever underrate them. And of course, nowadays, especially if you are good in dancing a little bit, making videos here and there, TikTok is also catching up very fast. Like right now, I was trying to analyze the comments. I mean, at RCM Online College, now we have a TikTok account. And there is a very good lady who is able, you just hired her to do that work, right? She's able to do very good post and dance. And I mean, and it, you're getting traction. So the moment you get to know, ladies and gentlemen, how to handle yourself on social media, in the next two to three years, that some of this employment we are talking about, we are employed eight to five. That employment will become meaningless very soon, especially if you know how to use social media. And gentlemen, I think I've ever done it this Christmas. This is Christmas. You see, like I attended a workshop in Machakos and half of the congregation were Aura students, you see? Yeah, every time I attend even ISPAC meetings, I mean, I get so many guys there that I've taught before. Cutters of what here? Social media. Where did you find that when you hold you? Did you anything on Facebook? At least ECA to it. Ha. But upon a very young people, when I could get to them, go to them online, like, and they become millionaires, they leave you there with your full-time job. Social media is a must. Is a must. Is a must. Any other course before we sign off? Before we sign off? I talk about MBA. MBA is very good. If I were to go back a little bit, I would do MBA in strategic management, not MBA in accounting. Because of what year, we know that uh, this accounting, uh, the softwares are taking over. Robots are taking over this thing of number crunching. If I'm the one, ladies and gentlemen, today going back, in terms of rolling back the wheel a little bit. I will do MBA, strategic management. If I'm very good in marketing, I will do MBA in marketing. Like myself, I'm a very good marketer. I'll do MBA in marketing, all right? And once I do, for example, MBA in strategic management, then what do I need to do here? By the side, strategic management, dealing with strategic plans, crafting strategies, I must be a very good writer. So it means that I have to invest a lot of resources in terms of improving my writing skills. All right, writing skills. Strategic management would mean that I have to be a very good public speaker. So it means that I have to come and uh, look for ways of uh, improving so seriously my public speaking skills. Because, you know, strategic management is all about coming up with a strategy. It could be a cost-cutting strategy and convincing the board, convincing the stakeholders. So you must be a good speaker, all right? And then of course I'll come and do now these other theoretical courses like the CFE we have in this case here, like the CS is very good. The PMPs, they're very good to enable me in this case here, get broader knowledge of uh, crafting strategies. Because at the end of the day, like right now, if you are working for a company that is not talking about uh, chat GPT, if you are working for a company that has not for example, bought a license of chat GPT. I mean, you need to start looking for jobs elsewhere because the time you're wasting at the workplace is so much. Why nowadays in this era, why should you waste a lot of time like you are drafting a letter 
a letter to no 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 i should be able to have not the free you know there is a free chat gpt the one that is licensed the one that has a license the one that you pay is so exact so if it's about for example statistics analysis you simply put numbers there it's able to you're able to save time so if you're working for a company in this case that is not big, uh, talking about automation in this era then there is what here yeah, there's a big big problem there so then i would need in this case ladies and gentlemen to do what here yeah, do those things which are aligned with what your stra strategy All right and of course if it is strategy i must also be able to know this data analytics because you know most strategies are, again they have to be underpinned with what yet numbers so i must be good in data analytics like that please i've taught mbas for so long most of the mba things you'll come will start teaching you again there like if it's accounting right there is nothing especially these Kenyan universities there is nothing there you are you, you are mastering you're still teaching you things that are in cpa all right and i'm telling you this a lot of humility Ladies and gentlemen, in this case, if I were you, I would do MBA strategic management, ETC, ETC. And again, as a, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, we finish on this. Once you start doing MBA, now remember you're becoming an academician. You'll be doing a PhD after MBA, perhaps. Please ensure that you do your thesis alone. Never look for a person to write a thesis for you. You would rather get a mentor like myself I go through your thesis and advise, but the thesis must be written by you 100%. There are things you need to know, all right? All right? For example, like a thesis is normally divided into two, general category, two. So we have in this case the conceptual part, and then we have the measurement part. So under the conceptual part, like the background, what is this particular thesis talking about? The literature review. Go and, for example, select, like, for example, if you are doing something on automation, just the normal, the normal thing, for example, just type there, all right, Google Scholar. You'll get so many scholars who have spoken already about whatever you want to do. Select, like, say, 10 of them. Read the articles. Summarize them. Tell us in the literature review that this is what JA 2020 say, all right? Summarize the good paragraphs. And then we'll come and say, for example, now myself as Linda Mugoi, I'm coming to add this new knowledge. Because again, remember, at MBA is not like an undergraduate. You know, under undergraduate, we don't expect you, for example, to do what we call action research. We, we expect you, ladies and gentlemen, in this case, here to provide some solutions to some real problems. At MBA, especially if you go to a good university, they cannot uh, 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 allow you to do like just a basic research. At PhD level, especially, you can't do a basic research. It has to be an action research. You must be contributing some new knowledge to this particular word here, body. All right. So, and, and, and doing research, ladies and gentlemen, is quite uh, a nice thing. But I've always seen students who do shortcuts. Even myself, I've been approached by so many people that Mualim write. I sympathize. So, if I write, you know, a thesis is the major thing. This is the ice in your cake. So if I do it for you, I mean, I'm really snatching a very big uh, 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 plus from you, from me. So if you're going that way, and ensure that you come up with a, a title yourself very nicely, give us that theoretical framework, ETC, define the hypothesis yourself, have research questions yourself, all right? When you come in this case, you know, the measurement, now you're looking at, for example, the sampling. What is your me methodology? All right, great things. And I'm here to mentor you guys. Why should you look for somebody uh, along river or there to write for your project? All right, write a project that uh, even when they look at uh, plagiarism, they turn it in. You know, like there is a friend of mine who called me some time back that, well, you know what? Somebody has done this project for me. Now they have taken to the University of Nairobi on turning it in. It came over 40% plagiarist content. Now look at that stupid man. And that is why you'll get so many people who have done thesis. When you ask them what their title was about, they can't tell you. Even giving you the general structure, like the one that I'm telling you today here, the general structure of a thesis, they can't tell you, right? Because that thing was wrote for them. So we shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome. It's good you have known that now we are here to guide you people and we shall be. And of course, if you have time, for example, like now the guys who are doing masters at the moment, I mean, you can create time and tell me, Mualimu, Time we discuss about 
these projects here. There are so many things I can tell you about projects because I've supervised a number. Even by looking at basic things, I'll be able to tell you this one cannot get anywhere. Even by looking at the title, like you'd get so many guys talking about microfinance. I mean, that is cliche. Old school, those are things that have really been, you know, you want your project here to be what here, somebody to be current. Even for example, you're talking of literature review, not unless you're looking at a background of a model which started, for example, in 1900. I mean, literature review, your sources should uh, not be beyond five years. It used to be 10 years, now we have uh, shrunk it a bit because you want your project here to be current, to be current. And then good question there, examples of good titles, I'll not be able to give you an answer. And then I would love if you can write what we call a concept paper, right? You have to do like a one pager. Tell me, Mwalimu, I have two titles here and I've done these concept papers, two of them. Remember, concept, concept paper basically will give me a summary like of the whole thing. Like for example, how will you be using secondary data, primary data, etc. If you give me that, then I'll be able to compare the two and then I tell you, hey, Adam, this is good. But if I give you a topic, you know, you are doing research about something that you love, not something that Mwalimu loves. If I give you a title, that's as good as doing the project for you. I mean, there are so many research areas here. There are so many problems bedeviling our people in the society. Look for those problems. Getting solutions is what we call what here? Research. Is what we call research. But of course, if you call upon Mwalimu here for those guys who are doing masters, I don't know whether, do we have anybody who is doing their research at the moment? Anybody who is doing their research at the moment? I would really be interested in guiding you guys. It's a service I normally offer for free. For free, for free. Ah, like Sherry, great. Great. So we're doing your research at the moment. I'll get in touch. Get in touch, please. Get in touch, please. So what is the last course you want to talk about before we sign off? And I'm surprised. You're still 70-something in the eve of Christmas. That is so good of you. I mean, this is pure sacrifice. This is pure sacrifice. Somebody is coming to my inbox. Malim, you seem to, to be knowing so many things. Yes, because I'm always, ah, like this CCP. Only that now I'm an old man. If I was a young man, CCP is a course I would do. Because many, many companies, ladies and gentlemen, have a credit problem, including RCM. There is not, even if we try to tighten our controls, there is not a single term Students cannot run away with about a million Kenya students from us. And we are a small organization. Big companies like breweries, they are losing terribly. Because remember, very many people will come and approach you. They tell you, hey, you want to be your distributor. Once in this case here, they pass like round one, they'll pay you round two. They, they keep on increasing in this case. Once in this case here, they get good amounts of whatever they're looking for. Then they run away. So when you talk of CCP, we are basically looking at those professionals who will be able to craft credit policies for organizations. Don't look at this fella as that fella will be lifting up his phone, calling defaulters. No, a CCP professional is a serious professional. And when you are a CPA, you will be given so many exemptions in CCP. The unfortunate thing, there are very few colleges that teach CCP. I even doubt, because I used to know School of Credit Professional, but I don't think it's uh, there anymore. Anymore. All right. All right. I think now guys are tired. And if you are very tired, now you can allow Mwalimu here to talk about the very last thing, which is uh, RCM Toastmasters. So is there anybody who is interested in Mwalimu talking about RCM, public speaking class?